it's not time yet, y'all. I'm early. The thing prompted me to come up to 10 minutes early. So this is like, I'm not going to be overly chatty in the first 10 minutes or so because we're just getting ready here. Also, I'm organizing things around my wife because, again, my wife works nights. So it's very important to me that, like, I give her the room and the space she needs to sleep and not wake her up on manner of the evening doing TikToks, you know? So, hey, everybody, like, literally just got here. We don't start for another five minutes. We've got five minutes before... But I certainly appreciate people coming in early. I, I want to make an observation while I'm here, just straight up. Uh, I woke up about 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific, so about two hours ago. And I popped in on a couple of other people's lives. And I noticed that some people were just like watching episodes of stuff, which is fine. I'm not the target audience for that. But I noticed that it went on and on and on. And... The, the live video itself had like like 1K likes to it or something, but it had been going on for like an hour. And a testament to you guys as we start in four minutes and there are already 435 likes. We haven't even done anything yet. And you guys like it. It's just like, I like it, Picasso. Let's, let's go. Y'all didn't even wait for me to do anything, so... but I certainly appreciate it um, off the top because I imagine there will be people who will be sending invites to, to come in and join the chat. Understand that I'm going to be very particular because I'm trying to have conversations and I don't want it to devolve into, Oh, do you think Shelby is the hottest pink Ranger? And then there are these long pauses. Like I want to make sure that there's a nice, natural flow of conversation that i'm answering questions i'm seeing you look at that see in the time it took me to say hey why do i have so many likes now there are like over 700 what the hell guys like i, I need to get used to that don't I? I i need to prepare myself for the fact that people actually like me like that's good shit i appreciate you guys <coughs> couple things before we get started because we still have time I wasn't kidding <coughs> with the 100k thing oh like we're a long ways off from a hundred thousand guys like seriously but what's funny is that I said at 1800 I do a contest and now we're already at like 1960 and we're still climbing so we'll hit 2000 in a minute and at 2000 I promised that I would actually show everybody the Phantom Ranger theme song that I commissioned. I have been, I've been sitting on it for like a year. I've been really twitchy about putting it out here because I didn't want somebody else to take that credit for it. But again, I, when I had that thought, I was ignorant to how TikTok worked. And I understand now that that original, it'll be marked original and everybody will know if you trace it back far enough, you'll find it and it'll be me. But I will, at 2000, I'll actually share the Phantom Ranger theme song that I had done and submit it for you guys' approval. Uh, we still have about two minutes and people are, you guys are kind of filing in and out. That's cool. That's cool. Like, oh, 1.2K likes. I don't. Okay. Okay. Thank everybody for, for showing up. We I will wait another minute or so. Like, I don't even know what we're waiting for. Like, I guess now would be the time. Like, I'm literally, we're just going to talk about the process. I'm probably going to pedal Elite Force to you guys because that's that's my thing. We'll talk Power Rangers. I'll, I'll answer questions. Any questions. Like, I enjoy fielding questions, which is funny because I don't like the way my voice sounds. I don't like to hear myself talk at all, but I have lots of things to say. So there, there's an irony there. It's, that's, wow, I literally looked at my morpher to see what time it was. That, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. It, 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 it's eight o'clock. What the hell, guys? It's eight o'clock. Welcome to Phantom and Friends. I'm Phantom, you're friends. Let's hang out. 
uh, at 100K, I'm changing my name legally to the Phantom Ranger. That's not a publicity stunt or a ploy or a funny thing that I'm saying I'm going to do. And then in the end, when we will do a live video and I'll skip out on it, like, I mean that shit. We, there will come a time where I hit 100,000 subscribers or followers here and I'm going to go legally change my name. I think that would be cool as hell. You know, while, while I've got you here, since we're talking... I don't know if anybody's seen it yet, but episode 5 of Power Rangers Shattered Grid dropped today. It was late. It was supposed to drop yesterday. I think they were having some technical problems or something, but it dropped today, and it's not bad. Uh, originally, like last summer, I was meant to go out and be in Shattered Pass Part 4, but one, my armor wasn't here. My armor was trash. Two, at the time, my car wasn't the best that I didn't want to drive out to L.A. for that. And three, probably the most important one, he wanted me to pay. Like, and I understand now why, because there, there, there are costs associated with the production. Like, you need to, to cover your, your, your expenses. But I wasn't going to pay. And then even when I got to the point where I felt like for the exposure, for the right to say that I am the Phantom, to appear as the Phantom Ranger on screen and, and get that notoriety, maybe it would be worth it. But then you fast forward to now, we're on TikTok, and I'm getting that with you guys for free. Like, I love my favorite thing. My favorite thing on TikTok. It's not, it's not the likes, but like... I get a lot of likes, like, all the time. Like, there, there's a constant influx of likes on older stuff, too, on older videos. But my favorite are, like, comments and mentions. Like, when I get tagged in a thing, and they're like, even if the thing doesn't even, even pertain to me, it's whoever tagged me said, hey, I want the Phantom Ranger to see this, too. This means something to me. I'm going to tag my buddy, the Phantom, and I make it my business to go over there and check that out. Go Ranger. What's up, fellow Ranger? Hey, man, you just one of these. Uh, what's up from Brooklyn, New York? Wow, you're in New York, bro. That's that's solid. Like you Ninja Turtles, like the obvious joke is, do you have Ninja Turtles? Or depending on how far you got in Elite Force, do you have Kenister Knights? I'll be doing that a lot. Like, there are a lot of little things in Elite Force. Omega! Yo! Like, there are a lot of little nods that I throw into Elite Force that it's it's the Joss Wheaton approach to writing, I think. Elite Force will reward you for paying attention. Hey, Titanium, look, man, I get it. It's, it's 11 o'clock for you. Like, it's much later for you. So, I understand. <clears throat> so, please... The fact that you you popped in. Squad! Hey, while we're talking about that, Titanium pulled me to the side the other day. And apparently, Squad, without the D, because I don't put very much inflection on that D for some reason. Apparently, just the word without that D is like a derogatory racial slur. And I didn't realize that that was a racial slur. Like, I'm not one of those people who's like, oh, we need to be PC. But like, I, did, I wasn't looking to purposely, like criticize people so i won't be doing the squad thing at the beginning or the end of my videos anymore because i don't want to accidentally offend nobody like that's that's not what squad means like so if you hear me say squad i'm gonna hard d squad squad like <laughs> i'm gonna be real hard on that because i don't i don't want to offend people do we supposed to be inclusive that's the point of the Power Rangers is that it's supposed to be for everybody. We need a widow. Did I? I'm 47 years. I'm I'm a 47 year old black man from Detroit, and I in a live stream just said hard D, and I didn't get that joke. Wow, wow! I literally said hard D, and it went right over my head. Now I got get hard D's over my head. Shit. Okay, you know we're just gonna pretend like we're gonna move on. Hey, are you leaving, honey? Hey, guys, my wife is leaving. Give me one sec. Come here, give me a kiss. I love you. I love you, baby. I'm so, I'm sorry I didn't get to kick it with you more before you left. You're fine. You're fine. I love you. Drive safely. I will. I'm going to turn on my app, and I'm going to watch you. I'm going to watch to make sure my baby is good. Hey, real quick, 
as we venture into the realm of TMI. Titanium says, bye, Mrs. Phantom. Oh, bye. Thank you. Uh, my wife recently acquired her driver's license. It had been my, my privilege to drive her around. Uh, Gold Ranger says that she that they are grateful that you share me with them. Like the it says, tell her are grateful she shared you with us. But like guys, like so they. So yeah, my wife just recently got her license, so she drives now. We have a newer car now, so I don't feel bad about letting her go out in the jalopy. Be safe. You did you forget something? Okay, well, I'm watching. So, in an attempt to be... Omega says, have a safe trip. Thank you. In an attempt to be a good husband, I have a GPS app on my phone. So, when my wife moves in the car, I know what's going on. Which could sound a whole lot like I'm stalking her. But the app lets me make sure that she's good. And if there's a problem, I know exactly where she is. Like, like that's important. So... For her leaving, I want to make sure that I take a minute to say goodbye because this is new for me too. Like typically, if my wife needed to go somewhere or do something, she would be like, baby, do you mind taking me to a thing? And I'd be like, no, because like 100%, of course not. I don't mind at all. But now she's asserting that independence and she's she's going out. My wife called it husband GP. You know what? My wife, she's got one on me too. Like I can't show you mine. Oh, I guess I can I guess I can. Like, you can even see, like, my little name pops up. And then if you click on her, she's got her own little icon. You can't tell right now because, like, we're pretty much in the same place. But once she takes off in the car, you'll see her thing moving in real time. And then once she gets to a certain distance, it says she's out of the zone. So I know that she's, like, away. And then when she gets to work, it says she's arrived at work. I get notifications so I know that my baby is fine. I, as a husband... I appreciate such things. But, hey, thank you to everybody who showed my wife some love on her way out. She, you can thank her. You guys say thank her for sharing me. But, like, I wasn't going to do this. I wasn't going to do this at all. Hey, I see you. I see you, do. I saw the thing about Billy. I saw the thing about Billy is now, I know he's coming back for the 30th anniversary. Is it technically, like, is it Dino Fury still 29 like, whatever the next series is, is supposed to be 30. I assume that Billy was coming back for the next thing. Like, I would rather, yeah, I would rather not see Billy return in Dino Fury because it would be like a one-off Lord Zed sort of thing. Like, if Billy is back, I want Billy, like, back, like, full-on season, like, give him a mentor role, like, whatever they were planning to do for Hexagon. Like, I would love to see the Hexagon arc. I know that, um, oh my God, what's, what's Billy's real name? David Yost. David Yost was writing a script for a thing that happened with the Power Rangers, like the original team, like 30 years after. And I know he was pitching at the Netflix. I don't know how far that got. I don't know if, if that has traction at all. But kudos to see David Yost back in the franchise. Like, understand... In 1993, they bullied that man off the set. So now, 30 years later, to have him return as a legend is fantastic to me. Uh, Lord Zed got set up real hard in Beast Morphers too. Like, I think I think Zed, they did Zed some real justice. Like, seriously. Like, if you compare the the Lord Zed fight in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers that he had with with Tommy to the one that he had in Dino Fury where he's mopping the floor with Sporex and Power Rangers, he looks fantastic. Lord Zed is in his prime right now. And Gold Ranger just became my top viewer with 13 roses. Like, man, what I'm going to do with all these roses, man? Like... Man, I, I so appreciate the love. Oh, we missed the notification that said my wife is out the zone. Let's see where she is. Actually, no, she hasn't moved. She's still in the parking lot. She's probably setting up her. I'm, I don't know how you are. I'm the sort of person I can't 
do anything until like my music is started in the car. Like, hey, Tyranno Ranger, I hear you. I appreciate the thought and the sentiment. I, you don't have to send me any. Ah, I got a hat. That's dope. You don't have to send me anything. If from the kindness of your heart, if you want to do a thing for me, I will be, I will be gracious and I will accept it. And thank you so much. But know that none of you have to do anything. I'm not asking you for money. You don't have to give me things like hearts and roses. Like I imagine that Omega Black just became the top two guys. I imagine that once I hit like 10,000 or 15,000, I'll be doing things like this and I'll, I'll be doing sponsorships and I'll be like, hey, you know, send money to do a thing because we'll be working on big things. But right now it's like a little tiny TikTok guy who just wants to talk about Power Rangers. I would never. I had the thought I was talking to somebody. I don't know if they want me to mention their name on the live chat, so I won't. But I was having a conversation in DMs on, on TikTok today and somebody was asking me about uh, hardcover books. Uh, actually, Titanium did too, and I know Titanium don't mind. But they said, hey, are you doing books for Elite Force? And I said, eh, I might. My wife had been, like, trying to get me to do that. Ghostly Cloth! Yo! So um, she had said... I lost my train of thought there. Yeah, she was trying to get me to, to put stuff out. And I was like, ah. But now I'm at a point where it's out, and people are reading, and that's cool. Yeah, dude, so many viewers. Oh, shit, it's the, like, I'm, t I'm blown. Wow, 77 people. You know what? If this is what it, t 80, if this is what it takes to, like, because I said a thing, like, for yesterday, and then I was like, hey, I did a video. I was like, come through. I was actually really proud of my come through video to say, hey, come in and do the live chat. So, I, cool. Like, if that's what it takes, I'll do these every once in a while because, because these are cool. Oh, what my my original point. Where was I going though? Because we were talking about, we were talking about just doing, like I know, do a hundred and two. Like it's crazy. Hello, Shadow Dark, five fee. Like I always. That's okay. You say down, but like, understand, bro. That until TikTok, until you guys, until this, the only people who read my shit was my kid. And my wife, Bridge read it once. I know that Bridge from, from SPD read it because I gave him the link to my Google Drive and then a name that I didn't recognize popped up. So I know, I know that he saw it. I know he checked it out. Also, Jessica Ray from, from Wild Force has seen it. And I appreciate that. So when you say, oh, they left this 40, I'm down to 44. That's fine because this is 44, 46 people. As people come in and come out and fluctuate, these are the people who want to be here. Like, they probably came in and saw I wasn't shooking and jiving and I probably wasn't doing anything and they were just like, oh, I'm out. But for the diehards who want to be here and hear me talk about my stuff, you guys are sticking around. And that's why that number isn't dropping below a certain number because I appreciate you guys and I feel you guys. Uh, Katie, Katie, thank you for saying I could just call you Katie because I wasn't going to be like SCP-6269. That would have been a whole thing. Katie has been reading my prequel. Uh, Power Rangers Tarzania Force technically, technically is a prequel. Yes, like, give it to me straight, Katie. Like, I've made how I feel about Trizerium Force very clear. I stand by the story and its themes, but I don't think it's very well written. But I'm happy, I'm always happy to hear what what fans have to say and what other people are, are having to say because I'm always down for constructive criticism. Like, I won't improve, I won't get better until somebody comes to me and says, hey, you should be doing this. Hey, here's an update for you. Like, you don't know the streets or anything. My wife is successfully cruising down Bradshaw Road now, so she's safe. So yeah, Katie, I would love to know what you actually think of Trizerium Force. It's a it's a solid story. It's a solid read, and I am in the midst of rebooting it. Like, I think I, as a writer, now oh excuse me, I as a writer have grown as a person 
to the point that I can articulate the things that I want to say better. Hey, look, please, guys, don't don't get discouraged that, that people left. I don't care. I don't care. There could be two people here. There could legit be two people. And that would still be like 100% more than I'm used to. So I'm happy that people are showing up at all. Um, Tyranno, you can read my stuff um, in my bio. On TikTok is a link tree. The second link is SPD Elite Force, which is the first season of the series that I wrote. It's all there, including like the ep ep ugh, episode summaries and guides. It's all there laid out for you. And I figure after so much time has gone by, I'll release season two. But like for now, I'm waiting to hear more what people think of season one before we move on. Like, let's venture into the realm of TMI for a minute. Let's let's have a legitimate conversation because realistically, I think that's why people come. I think that's why you guys are here because I'm just, I'm trying to be straight up with you. I'm a writer by trade, by definition, like professionally now. Cause like I'm paying, people are paying money to read my stuff. Oh wait, wait, somebody, wait, wait, wait. Let me go back. Oh, Titanium, you on your way out? All right, buddy. That's cool, man. Thanks for stopping in. May the power protect you, bro. I, I always appreciate that guy. Well, um, let me know what's going on with uh your sword of darkness too. Let's let's find out how that's working out. Um, I haven't I haven't heard much from TN Ranger since then. But to his credit, to his credit, I I was like, oh man, what if it's a problem? Like now that the contest is over, what happens if we have some mix up? Like maybe it could be a problem. But no, like as soon as I announced the contest, dude was like, hey, give me that guy's address. I'm ready to go. Hey, I think I, I just saw Burst Limit pop in here. Hey, bro, dude, saw your video today. I live for that shit, man. I love when people have, when they have something so profound, they think they need to say that it, it mandates a whole video that they tag me in. I'm always happy. I'm always happy to get, because it's interaction. That's what I want from you guys. That's why I'm here. It's interaction. I don't understand. It's that 5.3 thousand. Like, you guys are like the best. I I don't understand. Like, but I think that's imposter syndrome. Like, as me personally, I can't fathom why people do. But like, cause I see me every day. I I I know what I'm capable of. Like, this is this is new. Like, this is just what I am every day. But for you guys, it's altogether different. So it's. I appreciate that you guys do what you do. Like, I know I sound like a broken record. I know I, I seem like I just keep rehashing over this. But again, TMI, I'm sensitive. I'm sensitive as shit about my work. Like, I am I once had a girl tell me that she felt like she was reading an episode of Seinfeld. And I didn't understand why she thought that that was an insult because Seinfeld is some of the best long-term storytelling I have ever seen, ever seen. Katie, yes, you uh, is that I want to say is it Prisma? Because I actually there's a Prism on base. I have a guy who has a daughter named Prism. Like I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Prisma is pretty, but if you want to switch up the backstory. I I have ideas and thoughts that I wanna I wanna work on with you. Um, the arc that I wanna work on it's it's more wild force based. Uh, it's tentatively called In the Wild or Call of the Wild. I don't know yet, but I know it will deal heavily with wild force. And I know I want to incorporate orgs into that. And I want I just there are a lot of things that I want to do and incorporate you guys into that. So be on the lookout. And I would love, I, I love all the input and the feedback because if you tell me what you want to see, either I can do that or I can't, you know, but the fact that you're here and you guys keep showing up, clearly there's something you like. So that's cool. Prisma Aku. Dude, that's, that's dope. Like, I pride... SPD Elite Force, like it's supposed to be this all-inclusive place where everybody can come. I, 
if you were to poke around long enough through the concordance in my Google Drive, you would find that I have an Equitable Treatment Act that, that, that states that all races and species have to be treated a certain way. So the fact that there's an org now, like that just opens the door to so many things. Oh, uh, Burst Limit, uh, your opinion, just working on video. Oh, you guys are just having conversations. That's cool. Phantom Ranger, what do you think of the Draken Helmet and Dragon Zord? The Draken Helmet? Uh, I, I guess it would depend which one you mean, because they're, they're like, depending on what evolution version. No, dude, you're fine. Stop, Omega. It's like, no. Please, I'm not an attention whore. Like, I am. But, like, but no. Like, this is interaction. Like, like, Whoever these people are, whoever these people here now, this is this is my squad. Like, it, I don't need this to be 800 people. I just need good, solid folks on my team. And right now, I feel like I got good, solid folks on my team. Even Faye showed up. I met Faye today. And I know Faye is supposed to be streaming something right now. She was like, hey, I'm going to head out because I got to get ready for my stream. And Faye is here. Why are you here, Faye? You should be streaming your own shit. Thank you for coming. I'm so glad you're here, but I didn't expect to see you because I knew you had your own thing going on. But it's cool. It's cool. Oh, the Harris family. The, the Somebody, I don't know who this is, but somebody's supposed to be in my family? No, nah, I don't. That's weird. Like, I, I'm so weary about adding people to to my live because then it disrupts the flow like it's already hard enough to have conversations and, and still like try to be here in the comments so i try to make sure i do that but if i'm also entertaining another person i can't do that but eventually i will run out of shit to talk about or this shit will get old and we'll have to add other people in just to spice it up um if there are questions I'm happy to feel questions at all. Like if you have a quick, like, like a Power Ranger related thing, or if you want to ask about Elite Force, or even if you want to get personal, like depending on how personal you want to get, like I'm, I'm not about to, we, we won't go crazy, but I am happy to get to know my squad and let my squad, you know, get to know me. So please have at it. Like I'm so I don't, I'm not used to having this level of support all the time, you know, like, especially not for writing, especially not for anything that I've done. Oh yeah, shit. Wow. I, I smoke a lot so I can, I can run off on tangents hard. And I think I did the thing where I went four or five different things ahead and completely forgot we were talking about Draken. Uh, I think the original Evo 1 Draken Helmet is cool, but anything after Evo 2, they were just tacking shit on. Like, it just started to look like a, a, a the clusterfuck Megazord. Like, Evo 3 is cool, but, like, that's... Mm, the first one is the best. Um, what drew me to the Phantom? That's a fun question. Thank you, Omega. Um, I made a promise to a little boy once. I was being funny and Power Rangers was on. And a little boy was like, dude, this fake. I was like, no, dude, I'm a Power Ranger. And he was like, what? I was like, yeah, I'm the Phantom. And he was like, oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm in. He was like, well, show me. I was like, well, the Phantom don't take his helmet off. Like in the show, he doesn't take his helmet off, but it's me. He was like, so why don't you? I was like, I just don't. I just don't. And that little boy is like 15 now. <laughs> He's 15 or 16 now. And I don't even talk to his family like that anymore. Like, we, I moved since then. It's been a whole thing. But it started with a promise to a little boy that I wanted to be the Phantom Ranger because a lot of people cosplay. And there's a, there's a line between cosplay, I think, because I don't feel like what I'm doing is cosplaying because cosplay is like, hey, I like Tommy or I like Billy and I'm going to get a suit and be Billy the Blue Ranger. There is no preset Phantom. There, nobody can lay claim to the Phantom but me. 
like the original actor who did the voice like i've spoken to him like he's like yeah it was fine but it was work i got paid x amount of money it was a non-union job it's not a big deal like he doesn't come out to conventions or anything he doesn't care he doesn't care so when you run searches for the phantom ranger all you get is me all you get is is are the things that i'm doing which is super cool and now now i'm here and i was saying it at the beginning of the live because shattered past is out now on youtube which again i heavily support anybody doing fan films hey deku deku plus ultra um i appreciate anybody doing fan fiction and stuff and you should check that out but the phantom the the thing that i'm doing here now is like if you were to do a definitive search for the phantom you get me like you i when i do a conspiracy video or uh, a hypothesis video or I, i'm just spell, spelling something out i always put a little picture of me in the corner without the helmet on so you know who the phantom ranger is like my goal originally was, and again, this is what I was saying at the beginning, was I wanted to be in Shattered Past. I was offered a spot out there, and I was going to go out and do that. But I didn't want to have to pay. And what I was looking to do was just get recognized as the Phantom. And now I get that in spades here. Now I don't, I don't have to follow behind anybody else to get that because I have a following. And you guys just keep coming and that's so cool so while i was up to 109 and now it looks like it's just nine then hey i guess it's just the 10 of us it's just the 10 of us here um yes i did see david yost as billy um i i met him recently like within the last six months he was at a con i went out and he he wanted way too much for an autograph. I think it was like 75 bucks to sign my action figure. So I didn't get it signed. But I did go out and shake the man's hand. I like Billy. I'm glad that Billy is finally getting the props that he deserves. So let's see what Billy can do. And again, I don't want him in Dino Fury. I want him to straight... Like if he wants to make a cameo in Dino Fury. Like in the last two episodes to be like, I've got a school somewhere. You guys should come check it out. And then the next season is him teaching in the school. That's cool as hell. But I don't want to see a one-off. Like, he just shows up and he's like, hey, guys, I used to be a Power Ranger. I I assumed that David Yost was going to get some sort of role. I assumed that they were going to do something big with him because they made a big fuss about focusing on his flashback in MMPR when they were in Dino Fury and they're watching, like, the, the old footage and they're looking for stuff that they can defeat Zed. They did a close-up on Billy before he got turned into a kid. So it was like, why would you focus on Billy if you weren't going to do anything with that? So I think that these are long-term goals. The same way they set up uh, in Beast Morphers, they showed Lord Zed and they were like, we can never bring back Lord Zed because Lord Zed's too evil. Sure enough, the next season, Lord Zed shows up. So I'm, I'm glad to see that Billy is getting his props. I'm also going to go out on a limb right now because I have you guys here. I'm going to say it again. They're setting up for Shattered Grid. 100%. Here, here is my line of thinking for that. And please, you guys, if you if you think differently or if you could put a different spin on it that makes it make more sense to me, that's fine. Spider-Man No Way Home is one of the highest grossing Marvel movies, even though technically it's not a Marvel movie. Because what they did with Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, we have now effectively linked three universes together into one. People like structure. People like connection. People like continuity. People like to know that the things that they like mean something in the universe that they're doing. I, Deku, give me one minute. I will, I will give you everything I know about Power Rangers Unworthy in one second. The Spider-Man thing... Having everybody is like Andrew Garfield, I thought was a really good Spider-Man. Tom Holland, definitive Spider-Man. But now all three are canon. All three are legit. All three are Spider-Man. There's not, oh, you have to pick one or the other. Because that movie did so well, because it was so good, what they did was they spent a billion dollars doing rewrites for Multiverse of Madness so they could add more cameos and include more people and connect more universes to Marvel because they see how people respond to it. So I will say, even if 
Simon Bennett and the people over at Hasbro and the people over at Netflix weren't planning on doing Shattered Grid. After they saw No Way Out, No Way Home, they saw how good that did. After Multiverse of Madness drops and they see how much money that makes for connecting continuities together, any company who has the lore and the backstory and the mythos of Power Rangers who does not connect all 30 seasons is missing out on an opportunity and they know it. No company, no self-respecting studio will throw away money. This concept is a winning formula. People love connection. People love structure. So when they connect all the Power Ranger universes together through the multiverse, which I feel like they already have, the fact that we have one of these here, the fact that transportal technology exists at all says to me that we can just we should be able to travel back and forth with no problem. I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent because Deku asked me about Unworthy. I love, I love Unworthy. I saw the first episode. I thought it was okay, but it was really the second episode where the Arbiter really got out cold that I fell in love with their series. Let me scroll back up. I enjoyed, I enjoyed Unworthy so much that I completely rewrote a season of Elite Force to incorporate the Arbiter. I wanted to have the Arbiter in Elite Force, so I found a way to rewrite him and rework him to put him in my series. And I, I think I did okay. Like I think I did all right. Like for those of you who ever get that far, because I I have I did the math on it. I have as much content for Elite Force as there is content for Power Rangers as a whole. Like I've got, I've got so much stuff that eventually, if you ever get to like my seasons ten or eleven, there are a lot of great things happening. So yeah, I love Unworthy. Um, the future of Power Rangers is is technically unclear. Like it's unclear only in the sense that we don't know. We we aren't being told, and I think a lot of that came down to. They didn't want to tip their hand. Like Simon Bennett didn't want to come out and say, hey, guys, we're planning something big. We're going to get Billy back. We're going to do this, 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 and this. And then a contract negotiation falls through. But you see little things happening now, like Billy is on his way back. You see how Tommy is still championing the franchise. I, I still stand by Jason Font is setting himself up to be the successor to Jason David Frank. When Tommy is no longer promoting Power Rangers, whenever that is, Wes will be out there doing it. Uh, Deku said, what is my favorite Power Rangers series? Wild Force. Wild Force is my favorite series. I I have very personal roots. Personal roots to, to Wild Force. It helped me through a very difficult time. But that's not why I came back. I came back for Time Force. But Wild Force is my favorite season. But ultimately, like to say I have just one is hard. Wild Force, again, for, for very personal reasons, yes. But anything that involves government organizations like like Lightspeed Rescue, Beast Morpher, RPM, um, to an extent, Operation Overdrive, uh, Time Force, SPD, like all of these things kind of, like, like government-run organizations with like not teenagers with attitude, but like adults with careers, and I appreciate those. Um, my thoughts on Jason David Frank's movie. Um, Legend of the White Dragon, the only complaint that I have about it now is that when he, they came up with that title, they didn't know what Peacemaker was doing because the White Dragon in, in Peacemaker is like a white supremacist. And, and when people search White Dragon, people are probably going to get the White Dragon from Peacemaker before they get Jason David Frank's Legend of the White Dragon. Um, also, to my understanding, like, don't quote me on this, but I know that Legend of the White Dragon was pitched as a Power Rangers film. They wanted it to be Power Rangers. They got former Power Rangers to come back, but Hasbro gave them a cease and desist order because it's Jason David Frank. Like, anything that Jason David Frank does with other Rangers is going to get more play than what Hasbro was doing. So, again, to my understanding, they hit him with a cease and desist and was like, you can't do Power Rangers. You can't let it be Power Rangers. So now Legend of the White Dragon is just not Power Rangers anymore. So they're just doing their own thing, set in their own universe. But, like, if you really look at it, 
it's a guy who gets a, a, a gem or a jewel. It grants him powers. They, they transform into suits that now give them special abilities. That's the Power Rangers. Like, that's the formula. Um, to my understanding, Legend of the White Dragon drops in 2023. Um, I know Jason Font is in it. Uh, they got Johnny Young Bosch is there. Sierra Henna's there. Jason David Frank. Um, Jason David Frank's daughter is in it. I think she's supposed to be like a main character or something. So, cool. Uh, I'm, I'm actually, I'm on the fence about seeing it. I'm going to see it because I'm a sucker for anything Power Rangers. Anything Power Rangers related, I'm going to pop in and check it out because I'm a whore for Power Rangers. Like, I, I love the concepts and the themes. I love how Power Rangers is very much like Eth Bully for Ethan and Power Rangers Dino Thunder is a very good example because I'm petty. I can be I'm petty as hell. But but Ethan, who knew he had a morpher and knew he could mop the floor with this football player, found better ways to address his problems with him and realized that the dude had like a learning disability. He ended up helping the guy out. That's that to me is the, the quintessential example of being a Power Ranger. It's like, yeah, I have the power to mop the floor with you, but I recognize that you need help and you're lashing out because you need help. Let me help you. And that, that to me is the definition of Power Rangers. Is look out for people who can't look out for themselves. I can shine bright without having to dim other people. And that that's the foundation for me. And that's why... I'm here. Do I like Bulk and Skull? Luke, I love Bulk and Skull. Bulk and Skull, I still say to this day, has the most character development. They are the most fleshed out, drawn out, established characters in the Power Rangers universe. They went from bullies in high school to cops to detectives to alien warriors to count down to destruction where they stood up and said, I am the Red Ranger. Like, they did a complete 180. Bulk and Skull deserve more. And I think, I think Skull getting rich, Bulk should have never came back. Bulk should have never showed up for Samurai. That was a blight on his legacy, I think. You, you didn't need to do that. To watch a grown man who, like, he is now clearly in his mid-40s, flopping around like he like he did in high school with the same music and everything like that wasn't cool they they could have they could have did better than that oh my god you just got your red ranger suit is this your first suit um wait dumb bum comics book to wow that's a long one hey but uh is this your first suit like there's nothing like your first suit bro uh what was my my first one was uh was my spd suit i got um the spd duty uniforms for Power Morphicon 2018, and I loved it. Um, oh, tomorrow is Deku's 19th birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I understand that I'm, I'm specific standard time, so in Eastern Standard Time, it's almost tomorrow, a lot earlier for a lot of people. So, happy birthday. Hey, you can rent this, and you can rent the suits here. There are places where you can rent the suits here. I wouldn't want to rent a suit. I wouldn't want to rent a suit. Like, I feel like everybody been in that suit. Like, pre-pandemic, maybe. Post-pandemic, I feel like I just couldn't anymore. I like to, to know that my suit was used and somebody else squoles in here and then he might not have had on a cup. Ooh, I, I just, mm -mm, I'm, not, I'm not interested. Uh... Victor says, how do I feel about Naja Storm? Oh, I love Naja Storm. <laughs> I know what you meant, bro. I'm just being a dick. Ninja Storm. Power Rangers Ninja Storm. Um, Predestination Paradox. That's cool. I think, I think that Ninja Storm is one of the underrated seasons because it was meant to kind of be a blow-off. I loved that um, Lothor... He knew he was a comic relief villain. He knew he wasn't very good. He knew his plans would fail. But all he really wanted to do was get all of his minions into into the uh, the underworld. What did they call it? 
the underground now not the nexus that's wild for us like there are so many it's not the advent void was was ninja steel no that's antiverse advent void is common writer well whatever that they the abyss of evil it was the abyss of evil he just wanted to get everybody into the abyss of evil then he would go he would crack it open they would he would have an entire undead army at his disposal and it almost worked it was really close but it just it wasn't meant to be well ninja storm is so underrated because it got blown off as a comedy but there are a lot of really good themes there there's time travel and the predestination paradox and a lot of those things could have been avoided cam was salty with his dad for not letting him be a ranger but sensei knew that cam would eventually have to go back in time to get the the, the samurai amulet so to give him a different morpher before that happened would have messed with the timeline and and sensei knew that which is why he held on the way he did um favorite character I hate what happened to the Red Range he is my favorite character okay what happened with a Red Ranger I felt like I missed something there uh I don't know if Ninja Storm is equal to SPD like maybe in terms of comedy because I think a conversation between Dustin and Bridge would be fantastic uh I think a conversation between Tori and Sid would be interesting because while Tori is a surfer girl, she's not like, oh, look at my nails and oh, I'm rich in my family. Like, that would be a th that wouldn't be a thing. SPD, honestly, are like my favorites. And again, I say government run because if I spell it out for my head cannon for you, for me, it was always in succession. Lightspeed Rescue merged with Biolab to become SPD, or at least was absorbed into SPD because we know SPD was founded in space like 100 years ago. It's an institution. It only came to Earth in 2001. We know it was here in 2001 because those flashbacks show the cellular enhancers going off with, with all of the B-Squad's parents being affected except for Cap Max. So they were here in 2001. SPD would eventually go on to become Time Force. So I think all those things are connected. But for SPD to become Time Force, they would have ultimately to have bonded or at least merged with Beast Morphers because you got Grid Battle Force and RPM because now Beast Morphers and RPM are pretty much like, so you've got Transportal Tech so they can come back and forth. But government run organizations anywhere where there's a command structure anywhere where there's a clear leader and they're like no sir yes sir follow out my orders kind of thing that's why here we go we circle back that's why in elite force i deal with the star trek the next generation chain of command it's very much no sir yes sir just mm, we on a base it's a facility we got mm. so i i dig the base life i dig the command structure and that's why i think all the government run organizations and power rangers are like some of my favorites but wild force will always be the one for me wild force will will always be the one like i i don't talk about it much because it's not a flex at all i'm just i started sending messages to jessica ray on instagram in like 2015 and it would it would just be hey how you doing hey what's up and like sometimes she would like it sometimes she wouldn't but i developed such a rapport with this woman that we would sit up and we would just have conversations and then we went out to power morphicon and we had to meet and we hung out and we did a whole thing and we we had a really good time and now jess and i are just cool like like she has no connection to power rangers anymore she's still like, she's a wife and a mother. She's got a business. She's got other shit going on that don't really have much to do with Power Rangers. But she still loves the franchise and she still comes around. But I follow her more to see what she's doing in her life. You know, I'm I'm just as invested in what she's doing in her life. Oh, wow, I'm seeing some, some Green with Evil talk here. I was literally in my peripheral saw Green with Evil and you caught my attention. Like, wow, MMPR season one has lots of 90s. Yeah, it does. Like, I try to watch them now. Like, some of the episodes are hard. 
some of the episodes, like that one where they like where like Jason's holding them and like Kim's got her stuff all in his face, and then like there's somebody else, and he's like holding them, and he's just like spinning them around like a helicopter, and the putties are just walking up and knocking them over, like. <clears throat> MMPR suffered in a couple of areas. Um, but Wild Force for me will, will always be it. But MMPR, that's where it started, man. You 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 can't you can't crap on MMPR because that's that's where it started. That's where the craze began. Oh, I have a message. Hey guys, it could be my wife. You guys know I have to be a good husband. Oh, see? That's my wife. She's wanted to let me know that she made it safer. See? Yeah, my baby, she made it to her mom's. Uh, Wild Forest, it was, it was, it did, it felt like a book. And you know what's funny, Damien? If you watch the first episode and the last episode, and like the first ones, you can see the, 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 the woman reading the story to the little girl. And in the last one, my wife just showed up, y'all. My wife, my wife is in chat. So y'all want to y'all want to show her some love. In the last episode, Alyssa's reading that story. So it does. It felt like it was a story. Um I'm not even familiar with Universe 4 Professional Nerd like is is that like is that like a subtitle for like the comics is that like cuz I know the comics they they don't necessarily mesh with each other. Like there are other ones. So is Universe 4 just one that I just haven't checked out yet? Like, I honestly, I don't read much of the, I don't read the comics all that much. I, I keep up. Um, how many of you are familiar with Disney Brain? Disney Brain is on YouTube and he does a lot of summary stuff. So I'll, I'll catch up to see what's going on with him just to get his take. And also there was a comic historian on YouTube he would do all the comic book stuff and he would just do a really good recap to let me know what was going on. So I don't necessarily read the comics. Uh, Rangers Universe is about the, the Morphin. Oh, yeah, the Mor is that out? I know that uh, the Morphinite is supposed to be the Phantom Ranger in a white suit. For the record, I'm against it. For the record. Like, I understand that my claim to the Phantom Ranger is superficial at best, but it's still more so than most. The white suit looks weird to me. It's just, it's not... I don't want to see the the Phantom armor is not meant to be like, oh, there's a set of red armor and black armor and green armor. And it's like, it shouldn't be. It's black. It's just black. I don't think that the Phantom is Zordon's son. I don't think he's the living embodiment of the Morphin Grid. I think I think the suit powers him. My head cannon, again, nothing to substantiate. There's a video, one of my first videos about the Phantom when I was like, oh, I should do conspiracy videos. I think that the um the red ruby is an uncased inner gem. If you notice, I wanted to grab an inner gem here. Let me but I set up my chair to do these videos and end up knocking all my data cards over behind me, but you won't see it. This is an inner gem. A, the difference between a cased inner gem and an uncased inner gem is like this, the top and the bottom, this is cased. This is, it's capped on either end to harn, ooh, to hold the power. The, the ruby is an uncased inner gem. And because he didn't have these two ends, because he just... Like, he found one uncased, and it just didn't work. He had to build an entire suit of armor around it to maintain that power. So that's why when you see the ruby come out of his chest, his whole suit powers down. That's that's my take. That's my definition. That's I need to stress because TikTok like to get on me. That's not the canon. That's not what the official lore says. That's what I say. But there's nothing in the canon that contradicts it. So... Uh, my hair cannon is Kendall Morgan. Dude, I don't even understand why that would have to be hair cannon. Their last names are Morgan. That makes sense. They both start with a K. Like, that makes sense. Parents do that all the time. They they, they name their kids similar things so you can, they have a ring to them. That makes sense to me. Kendricks and Kendall Morgan are related. Like, that's not even hair. That's cannon cannon to me. Moreover, Elizabeth Delgado and Danny Delgado are related. They have to be. 
They have to be. Their, their seasons are too close together. Their last names are impeccable. And they're both like Mexican. Or I don't want to say Mexican. Or, oh, now I feel bad because I don't want to say Monica May is a Mexican. I don't... Is she... Uh, there's this... Latino. Thank you. Holy crap. Why couldn't I think Latino? Thank you, Damien. Crap. So, yeah, I think they do things like that. Hispanic also works. But they clearly knew what they were doing when they did that, like straight up. Like there are little nods and like SPD, like the Blue Centurion was like in a video game in the common area. So there, there are all these little connections. And I don't think it's a far-fetched connection to say Kendall and Kendrick's are related. I don't think it's a far stretch to say that Danny and Z were related. It's not... I don't think it's a far stretch to say that, that Elizabeth Delgado in some way, shape, or form has a connection to Lord Zed. Have you seen the Z necklace that she lost? It's literally the top of Lord Zed's sword. She loses it when she's a kid. Doggy Kruger finds it and gives it back to her. It's a Z, dude. It's the same Z. So I, I don't have anything to substantiate. I, I don't even have theories dealing with that yet. But it's clearly the same Z. Oh, I missed some stuff. Let me go back. Let me go back. Yeah, she's hi, baby. Yes, they are Hispanic. I love that my wife is here. Like straight up, hey, baby. That's so cool. Um, Jason Scott and Jen Scott is another one. That one makes complete sense to me. But, but I think her last name was Scotts and not Scott. I don't know. Like, don't quote me on it. I could be wrong, and I'm willing to drop that S. I'm even willing. Like, you know, surnames change over time. Like, the spellings change to adapt to modern culture. I would be okay if if she added an S or at some point Jason Lee Scott, his last name was actually Scott's, and they dropped that S in America or something. And then later on, it got picked back up. That could be, that's fine. I'll accept that. Um, yeah, yeah, names actually change. Oh, see, it is Scott's. Thank you. See, this is what I'm talking about. Fact check me in real time, man. Fact check me. Michael Parsons is in the building. Michael Parsons, my next Yellow Ranger series operator. What's up, Michael Parsons? Uh, I'm having a good day, dude. My wife is in the building. My wife is in chat supporting your boy, and I'm, I'm feeling all the love from my squad, man. What's up? Like, like legitimately, like, like, Mike, Omega, Titanium, like, Victor, dude, Victor, you my man, like, I have this consistent, like, this is my squad of people, I, forever, dude, Power Rangers, man, um, Bat in the Sun, I like the Bat in the Sun stuff, I feel, I don't want to be a yes man kind of guy, I keep going, yeah, I like everything, you name a thing, and I go, oh, yeah, I like that. Oh, I like that too. But I really do enjoy the Bat and the Sun stuff. Um, they did one with, uh, it was a Red Ranger versus a Ninja Turtle. And the guy who played the Red Ranger also played Landon Tate in Shattered Past. So it was nice to see that connection. Um, the comic, uh, Power Rangers Unlimited, that's the, that's the Phantom Ranger comic where uh, he saves Rita as a little kid. I love the Rita arc. The squad look um i don't think you understand sir when y'all do that i don't think you know the 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 box that ticks the the feels that that gives me dude yes dumb dumb bum comic boot talk stick around dude like we love having you hey when y'all say squad because i've been writing elite force now for a very very long time and we take our squads very seriously like you see the influences there like People go hard for their squads. Like, even later, I've got a, a chapter in, like, in, I want to say, season 13 called Squad Goals, where, like, three or four different squads all sit around in, like, a cafe, and they're having different conversations about their squad, but we're moving back and forth in between them so that you get a feel for how squads do different things. I take my squad seriously. I love my squad. I go hard... Like my wife and I, we want to get squad for our for our uh, our license plate. It's only five letters. You get a space squad space. That's seven letters. That's definitely the plan. Like we squads are serious. Like if you follow me 
on Facebook. And my Facebook links are here. And I have no problem if you guys do. Like, straight up. Me and my kid and my wife, if you watch wrestling and most Power Ranger fans do, we all put our fist in and we all we all believe in the shield. Like, you know the little emoji on, on Instant Messenger when, like, you can hit the thumbs up and like stuff? We all changed ours to the fist. So when something goes down and he go, oh, man, what's going on with you? Squad. Like, we we take our squads very seriously here. And I can admit to you that I wasn't expecting to find one on TikTok. I just wasn't. I Realistically, I thought I'd come out here, I'd talk about Power Rangers, somebody would have some intelligent conversations, we'd go back and forth, I'd meet like one or two people, I'd have a couple of associates, and that would be cool. I didn't realize I was going to amass a following. I didn't realize that in the hour I've been talking, I would get 6,000 likes. I don't know what the diamonds do. I don't know what the presents do. I don't know what the flowers do. But you guys just keep sending them to me. And I'm not going to discourage you. I'm not. Like, if you dig what I'm doing, thank you. Thank you. Like, I resist the urge very hard to not be petty because, I don't know, is my wife still here? My wife will tell you, I'm petty as shit. When there's something going on that I don't like, I will find a way to make roundabout comments about it to let them know. Like, I can be petty, but I bite my tongue on TikTok because we do not speak ill of rangers. Like, anybody on here, if you've got one of these, if you're doing Power Rangers content, if you have a suit, if, if you believe in what the show stands for, you're a Power Ranger. And just because you're being shitty and you're talking about Killer Ranger to take their power and you're talking about how big their booties are and how you don't appreciate the... Like, that's fine. But you're still a Ranger. You still have one of these. So I'm going to give you the respect that they deserve. Like, Power Rangers. Man... Mike, come on, dude. Morphers are so easy to come by, dude. Like, you know what's funny? Um, who is that? Who is that? We there's a guy. There's there's a guy. Uh, professional nerd. Give me one second. I want to get back to that. Like, let's 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 explore that. There is somebody on our squad who 3D prints. I know it. I know there is. And if they don't, I know my son does. It's you can come across a morpher, bro. You can get a morpher. I had a turbo morpher made. No, this is the official key. I had I had a key made. I had a key made. This is a 3D printed key so that I can make as many of these as I want. And the code and the the idea was on this one, this would be different symbols for each one. So we haven't gotten there yet, but dude, 3D printing is the way to go. My, my transporter device is 3D printed. You can get a morpher, bro. You can straight up get a morpher. And I tell you what, my guy, like straight up, because this is where I am. I have two of these. I have two Beast X King morphers. Like, one of them, one of them used to go off in the middle of the night at all hours of the night for no reason. The other one, I bought a second one to find out if that's just how they worked. And it didn't do that. So, one of them is possessed. The other is not. Dude, if you will cover shipping, I will send you the Beast X King Morpher. No ranger should be walking around without protection. If you will cover the shipping, and I, I, I want to be very forthcoming with you, dude. This dude is heavy. You messed with the wrong ranger. It's, it's, it's thick. It's a big boy. So it's going like when I sent out that Cassie action figure, it cost me 16 bucks. This is going to run easily 20, 25. And honestly, now that I think about it, that's silly. That's silly because I only paid 13 for the thing. Like, don't do that. Now that I think about it, don't do that. Like, go to Amazon and find a Beast X King Morpher. Like, I'm sure you can find one cheaper. Like, I, I want it to be that guy and send it to you and say, hey, cover shipping. But, yeah, it's going to cost you, like, 20 bucks. So, I'm, I'm not going to do that. You're welcome for Cassie Omega. Like, congratulations. I, I hold contests. <laughs> That's so cool. I have contests, and then people win, and then they, they, they check in with their stuff. I'm having such a good time with you guys. You want it? 
like, again, we talk it, it's going to be a lot. Like, a lot. Like, to send Cassie costs 16 bucks, and then I had to pay another 2 bucks for the box. Like, it's, it's legitimately cheaper, I think, to find one somewhere else. Like, now, if you're in it just because, oh, this was mine, and you want it because it's mine, I get that. But if you're in it just to have a morpher, you can probably do better somewhere else. Like, please. Funny story. Our son initiated counter battleizer morph. I was really wait, wait, Connor. That's Dino Thunder. Triassic Ranger. Okay. <sighs> okay. All right, bro. If that's what you want to do. If that's what you want to do, if you want, wow, wow, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Mm, Y'all going to make me cry. Y'all going to make me cry. This is what I'm talking about. There are Rangers in my chat right now. And the dude was like, I much rather have a, my Ranger squad have a morpher. Send it to him. I'll pay for it. That's. Dope. Like my question to you now, like, and I'm, I'm, I'm touched and I'm moved and I'm. That means a lot to me. It really does. Did you guys know each other before you met me? Did you guys meet through me and then I'm just late to the party, or did both of you guys meet through my content and now you're just looking to make sure he gets a morpher? Because if it's the latter, that's dope. Like, wow. When we talk about how this community brings people together how it makes people want to be their best selves for everyone else like straight up straight up that is oh my god i stand by this this is this is why i for some people for some people it's religion people have religions and that brings them comfort and joy and peace and it gets it gives them what they need to get through hard times and that's fine for me it's power rangers man i got comfort episodes that i go to all the time i love wormhole wormhole is one of my favorites forever red is one of my favorites countdown to destruction is one of my favorites um the first episode of power rangers wild force i'll never do it i'll never do it because it's rude and I don't want to overly sexualize anything or anybody, but there is an episode of Power Rangers Wild Force where there is a scene where if you pause it just right, oh boy, oh boy. Even even in first run, I saw that and I was like, oh boy. Like, I hope she got on little shorts under that. Ooh. But I'll never post it. I'll never do that here because I don't, I don't, I don't do that. The key for the black dino morpher. Oh, you know, I don't have a black dino morpher key. Um, the dino morpher key, I think, is just a variation of this one. But then they really took it a step forward with the other keys when they started introducing other keys. Um, let me see. Let me see. Uh, I want to make sure because I see Mike here. Uh, I inspire. Do please write. Please do. If you... If you have something you want to say, say it. Like, I'm learning. I, I learned very recently. I've been called an artist as of late. And I just figured I was a writer. I write. That's my thing. But writers are, like, one of the very few people who can take nothing and make something. There can be a blank screen, a blank blinking cursor. And then suddenly, like, with the right influence, you can... It's a whole universe. I've constructed a whole universe from just a blinking screen, and I love it. Uh, let's see. Um, people are reselling Reagan. Yeah, man, I don't like the way people, the way people hoard Rangers. That's why the Red Ranger is so expensive. Like, you can't get a Jason for less than like sixty dollars. He should be twenty bucks. But because people take it and then they buy like 20 of them, then they try to like sell them at a higher price. You shouldn't do that. Like you shouldn't be allowed to do that. And I think they're cracking down now. Hasbro has a limit of two. So they don't let you do that. Um, K 
Katie said a thing. I want to go back to what you were saying, Katie. Your custom morpher. Yeah. Oh, dude. I would custom morphers. Anything custom. Anything custom gets all the love in the world from me because it takes it a step beyond cosplay because you're not cosplaying anymore. I said this at the beginning of the thing. I, as the Phantom Ranger, I don't think I'm cosplaying. I'm at work. I'm the Phantom Ranger. There is no other Phantom Ranger. I'm not a Ranger series operator. It's not like there was a guy before me who was the Phantom and then after this, there's going to be another guy who's the Phantom. It's just me. It's just me. So when you have a custom morpher, no one can lay claim to that. You can't say, well, this person had it first. It's just yours. Taylor Major has a white Wild Force suit that's just with the Lunar Wolf. That's hers. And you can't tell her it's not hers because it's 100% original. Who's the white Lunar Wolf Ranger? Well, that's Taylor Major. End the story. I don't have a Jason yet. I want a Jason. I want a Jason. I might be getting a Ranger costume. I'm not gonna lie, but okay. Let's let's address this, bro. Let's address this real quick because I got a Ranger in chat right now who is looking to just send morphers out, bro. What is it? What's holding you up? What what makes you super nervous about cosplaying? Like, is it your size? Because I'll be the first one to tell you, dude. I'm like 260 60 pounds. The Lunar Coyote. Thank you for that correction, Katie. Thank you for that correction. She is the Lunar Coyote. I will keep that in mind. I will respect her pronouns. <laughs> so, dude, I'm 5'9", 260. Even in the pictures that you see, you see I got a little bit here. I don't care. I don't care. I love how I feel in my suit. I love it just... And the more you put it on, the more it fits like a glove. Like, granted, it, it takes two people. It takes two people to put the suit on. It's a lot of work, but once you get in there, you're good. Look, you gained 40 pounds. Bro, I got married in 2013, and I put on, like, 75 pounds, dog. That's, that's what they call happy weight. You are happy. You, you are a bigger guy. Nothing wrong with that. Like, I remember once, Tommy, JDF had done a thing. He did an interview, and he was talking about former Rangers coming back. And he made an offhanded comment about how some Rangers shouldn't come back if they weren't Ranger ready. And I was like, yeah, he's probably right. If you can't fit into the spandex, don't do it. I can look back now and say, that's false. That's false. You can be a big dude and be a Power Ranger. I, the difference, the difference, and there's a guy... There's a guy, and I don't want to, I won't give him shit. I won't talk about him. I won't say his name. But there's a guy who's got a red SPD suit, the spandex one, and you can see where his stomach, and he just tucked it in, and his stomach is just like, it's just, I, that's not cool. Respect the limitations. Don't, I don't want you to look silly in your spandex. I want you to respect your limitations, which is another thing that drew me to the Phantom because it had armor, because I knew... I was slightly a bigger dude, and I would need something to supplement that. So you can play into your strengths, man. You can play into your strengths and find something. I can... Like, I'm not trying to shame, but I'm really excited for the first time in my life. I mean, what are you... For the, you should be excited, dude. You should be excited. Like... And, and don't be excited because you, you now you in shape and you can wear the suit. Be excited because you can rock the suit. That's... This, this dude changed my life, bro. Like, I'm not afraid to tell you, and I will say it to anybody who listens anytime you ask me about it. When this box came, I cried. This was a moment for me. It was the common, it was the combination. It was the culmination of a promise that I made to a little boy over a decade ago. I remember telling my son he was having problems in school and I told him that you had to be good because I wanted to send him on a Zeo quest when he was 12 and he was like you can't be 12 and be a Power Ranger and then I showed him Power Rangers Turbo and he was like little kids can be Power Rangers and then suddenly his grades went up because he wanted to go on his Zeo quest like Power Rangers is powerful man I anything that you can 
anything that you can put your support in and back up anything where in the chat where people can get together who didn't know each other previously and say i need you to be the best ranger you can be like that is what makes power rangers great that's what makes us who we are carter is honestly going to become my favorite red ranger carter i want to shit on carter but i can't like Forever Red, I felt like, was not the most shining moment for Carter. Like, in in a, in a in an episode where they had so many unmorphed fight scenes, all Carter did was kind of pew, 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 pew. Like, I don't know what his, what his like, physical limitations were, but I kind of wished he had done more, especially considering what, like, Wes and Eric were doing. In the episode, Deadpool 99 Ranger. Deadpool Ranger, that's... Ooh, that's scary. That's a scary thought. But we have... This is a fantastic community. Yeah, but Carter, Carter was very pew, pew, pew. And again, I feel like I'm being nitpicky. And I probably am, but I... And, in an episode where there were so many good fight scenes, he just seemed to pew, 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 pew. And I guess everybody can't. I guess you, you don't want to do that for everybody. But Carter, honestly, Carter is in my top 10. Carter would make it to my top 10. Hey, you guys ever notice that I don't do top 10 videos? I, I, I try not to. Because I don't feel as though I'm qualified to tell you what the top 10 is or what the number one is. Like, I could tell you my opinions, and if we just wanted to talk opinions, but I wouldn't have anything to base that on if I didn't, like, based what? Uh, Deadpool said he had a question. Did I miss your question, bro? Let me let me scroll. I see a hi. I see hi, but I think that's when you showed up. What was your question, homie? I missed you. I, I, I apologize, squad. Let's, let's take care of that for you. Yeah. Yeah, when he thought he hurt that kid, he was ready to give it all up and walk away. Uh, I think another one, another good one is when uh, he was fighting the monster and uh, and Mitchell called him back. And he was like, no, why'd you call me back? We had this under control. But he had missed a critical thing and they were like around explosive barrels or something. And like, had he done what he wanted to do, he likely would have got somebody killed. That was a defining moment for Carter, too, because as much as he needed to understand he was in control. Isn't that the same episode? It is. It is. Holy crap. I'm literally describing to you the episode that you just took. But it's... Wow. I smoke a lot. <laughs> I make no qualms about the fact that the Phantom Ranger is down with 420. Not at all. Like, I don't do it on camera. You can't do it on camera because... Like, you get a lot that I saw they, they shut down Lady Gaga once. Like, and I'm not Lady Gaga, so I'm certainly not doing it on camera. So, I just won't do that. But I make no qualms about this, Mac, for the fact that I smoke weed daily. Daily. <laughs> oh, what time is it, guys? It is 9-12. We agreed to 90 minutes. We're about 15 minutes away, so... If you guys want to start wrapping it up, if there are things that you would like to address, while, while we're here, we've got 17 minutes. Um, show of hands. I say show of hands. How many of you, show of hands, who are here, just maybe a hand emoji? Hand emojis. How many of you have checked out Elite Force thus far? Matter of fact, before you answer that, how many, how many of you have gotten past, say, the third episode of Elite Force. Like, don't be embarrassed if you didn't. I won't be I won't be upset if you haven't. Like the fact that anybody has read any of my stuff is is moving to me. So if you've seen anything past maybe the second or third episode, let me know. Because I I would love Oh Damien, you knew. That's okay, bro. You knew. That's no problem. I'm glad you're here. Let's stick around. Let's talk about it. I'm also getting my weed. I can can I show it to you? I don't, I don't even want to show it to you on camera. I'll show you the battery. This is the battery. I don't even want to show you drug paraphernalia. I could get into some shit. 
Power Rangers SPD Elite Force. If you go to my bio right now, it's the second link in my LinkedIn. It's a series that I wrote. It's three years after SPD, and it deals with like the children of former Rangers. Fun fact, I said this in a, in a video before. Uh, two of the main characters, uh, Estella and, uh, and Nathaniel, those are Jessica Ray's real life children's names. Her oldest son is named Nathaniel. Her oldest daughter is named Estella. And I used those and gave her her own children in the series. In the series, she, she had kids with Bridge. And I, and I cover that. I make that make sense. That it's fantastic. But Power Rangers SPD Elite Force is it's in it's in my lake tree dude if you want to check it out that's cool katie katie is one of only two people who have actually seen and read trizerium force i i'm legitimately katie i'm gonna dip off to the side for one hot second for one hot second if you would love to tell what did you think of trizerium force like seriously i personally don't think it was the best i think it's not very well written but it comes down for you. Dude, dude, Deadpool, because I smoke, I feel like I do you wrong. Did you... Oh, my God. You, if the Power Rangers did a reunion, would they have the same powers? Oh, my God. Wow. That's that's my fault, bro. Let me... Uh, I want to answer this just because I'm already in the thought. Power Rangers... We do. I'm, I'm ignoring Deadpool. You about to get my undivided attention in a minute, homeboy. Give me one second. What? What? <laughs> um, Trizerio Force. Power, Ra <coughs> <coughs> Power Rangers Trizerio Force is it's a series that I wrote like in 2001. Like it's the Trizerio Crystals from Power Rangers Time Force get left in the past and the kids harness that to use those for powers uh, amongst the kids are Trip and the Dara's kids because Trip and the Dara got together. Um, Tommy Oliver's daughter is there. Uh, Rebecca Scott's, who you don't find out until later, is Jen's daughter. And then there's Michael Hart, who you find out is Kimberly's son. But she had a baby with like a rando dude that wasn't a Power Ranger. So that's Power Rangers Trizerium Force. That that's what we're talking about. Um, for Deadpool. I'm gonna answer Deadpool's question. I'm so sorry, Squad. I won't leave you out again, and I won't. I won't let things cycle around like that on you anymore. Um, if they were to get back together, I would argue that that happened already. That happened in um, is that Beast? Yeah, it's Beast Morphers. Beast Morphers, where Jason comes back, and the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers all come back. They don't unmorph. It's just Jason. Jason unmorphs, but presumably that's all them. Like, I would see no reason to think why that wasn't Rocky, why that wasn't Aisha, why that wasn't why that wasn't Billy. Like, that would make sense to me. So I don't see why they would get upgraded powers. And moreover, I think you'd be missing out on nostalgia overload if you were to focus on new powers with the original team. Because people want to see the original team in the original suits like, they want to go and see them do the kicky, flippy, punch, kick fight like they always do because we're nostalgia buffs. So I don't think that the MMPR Rangers would get, like, upgrades or anything. I would like to see them utilize the Ninjetti again. Oh, excuse me. Or even have a Master Morpher where they could cycle through. Like, I understand I have my reasons why the Master Morphers don't work. But I... I want to see them come back using their original power sets for one last thing. And it's important that when I say one last thing, that when it happens, like the coins shatter and they go, well, these don't work anymore. And that's the end of the original MMPR. Um, I also had the theory. I think I said it. I think I said it on TikTok once that... The idea that the Morphin Masters are actually the original cast of the Power Rangers, like like Jason and Trent. Like, if you could get all of them to come back just to take off them, and they were the Morphin Masters, and they just... Because they've been a part of the power for so long, now they just ensure that other things... There are problems with the theory, like, clearly. 
but it was a fun concept. It would make far more sense that the Morphin Masters were time force in disguise, manipulating events. Um, but in the prequel, yeah, um, yeah, uh, the prequel didn't need Tommy. I, I used Tommy only to introduce his daughter. I just needed that way in. Like, honestly, it could have been Cat. If you notice, if you notice, if you made it all the way through, through the book, um, Tommy doesn't come back. Like, there's no need for Tommy. Tommy's in the first episode. He introduces his daughter. Uh, Zalara comes. It's like, no, you misunderstand. I'm here for her. And then she leaves and she goes about her business. Like, there's no need to come back to Tommy. Oh, you know what? That's not true. He does come back because we do some time travel stuff, don't we? There's some time travel stuff. And we come back and that's why his daughter's name is Kim. So never mind. But as you can see, Tommy was not the highlight of Trizerium Force. Like, you can do a fun thing about Power Rangers and it not be Tommy. In Elite Force, I eventually do reference Tommy because I finally bring his daughter in from Trizerium Force. I finally bring her over in like 2032. It took me that long to finally get her over. And we make reference to the fact that Tommy has long since been dead. In fact, in season one, if you if you go through it, Jason shows up and he's talking to uh to Sky at SPD and he's just and he's talking about how Tommy deserved better because even as, as early as season one, we're saying that the Master Morpher killed Tommy because you can't have that many powers. Um Multiverse Ranger, hello, hello. Thanks for coming. You came and like yeah, we're headed out in the next 10 minutes, but super cool that you stopped by. Um, yes, David Yost coming back is a big deal. You know, I don't even... I don't want to see Tommy meet his end. I don't. I don't want to see Tommy sacrifice himself. There are two, two ways I would want to see an on-screen end to Tommy Oliver. I take that back. There are three. I'll do three. One, he's Zordon. Somehow... Through some, <laughs> he's Zordon. That would be cool. Two, I would love to see like the Incredible Hulk, the like the the walk away, the Incredibles, the doo -doo -doo, and just see Tommy walking down the road because he's given everything and now he's done and he just disappears over the horizon and we're done. Or third, or third, if we were to do like an old man Tommy. And have him like in his 80s or 90s just sitting on his porch and just see him as like, yeah, I used to have the power. And then like like on the news on a little radio in the background, they're like, you can hear where they're like, and the power rangers, and, yep, power rangers. And then like and now you know that like the new team is doing it just fine. Like, so that feasible ways for Tommy to meet his end gracefully like a blaze of glory is cool but i don't want to see him die because then he's a martyr like i, I would rather not i don't want to see them make him a martyr uh, like soul of the dragon was cool i i didn't like adding the 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 armor i didn't like that he gave the dragon armor to his kid i don't like that his kid was the green ranger i understand that it all fit but i i didn't like it uh, I was bothered by that. But the up point was that, like, Cat was an ambassador and was going to KO35 for stuff. That Tommy had all those implants, which I follow up on. Like, I do mention that Tommy had implants. So, I do. Multiverse just became my top two viewer. Man, what is with y'all? Thank y'all so much. I appreciate that. Um, free watch. So, I said he lost the coins to Rita in a, in a game. Really? That you said season. Okay, that you said seasons one through season three. If you have an episode for that, I'd like to go at go check that one out. Honestly, I, I, I might even be tempted to watch that one on live, like to just see. So you said season one, episode three? No, that can't be right. That can't be right. That hey, do Omega, you squad. Squad, I'm not even looking at the viewers. The view count don't mean nothing to me. The numbers of the viewers don't mean to me. The question is, squad, yes or no? The answer for all my people here is an astounding yes. And that's cool. Thank you, 
Multiverse Ranger for enjoying my content. It's important to me that my content remain as pure as it is. Like, I, I, I get, oh, you, you guys, mm, how I just want to just, there's some people in this community, on this platform that I just be like, why are you getting the, the recognition? Like, it's, it's not even good content. Like, if you're just showing clips of the show and you're not really adding anything, it's just, you put a caption, this was a cool fight. That's not content. That's not content. And if you're getting hundreds of thousands of views on that and you're moving up, I think that's silly. If there's there's somebody here, and I I follow them because it is a welcome distraction and it's nice to get those little clips, but there's somebody in the community who just posts Linkara clips. It's literally just, oh, Linkara did all the heavy lifting and all the work to do the research for these episodes. I'll just play a clip. And I... It's important to me that mine doesn't do that. You know, like, that's no slight against anybody. Dimitri was paint. Really? You have anything for that, Katie? Like, because that would... I, I know she was from Inquirious. I know she was related to Divatox. But if Dimitri... Yeah, if you've got something for that, that would be dope. Like, I don't... I'm not trying to crap on anybody's content or anything. I just feel like if you're not... If you're not contributing to a conversation, if you're not informing me, and if it's not funny, what are you doing? Like, if it's just, here's a clip. From, like, even if you said, check out this clip of Tommy and Kim, and then you see the clip of Tommy and Kim, and he go, I can't believe that X happened. At least have something to say about the clip. But it's literally, people will just post clips of the show. Those are the kind of things I don't hit like on. I don't, I try not to. I try not to because I don't want to encourage that. I try to support, but I don't want to encourage people stealing the TV show, not doing anything to alter it, and just putting it out there. I I I don't. Damien, um, he, uh, Damien says that he feels like the Master Morpher is the writer's way of being lazy. I don't. I think it was a new toy. I think it was a good way for them to reintroduce Tommy to the franchise and say, here's, Tommy is special, Tommy is different, Tommy has a master morpher. Tommy's morpher is different from everybody else's morpher. And that's okay with me. The problem with the master morpher is that we know that too much energy is dangerous. The master morpher in concept is cool, but it can't work. It's five sets of power. Do you, if you remember, in the uh, in the in the Turbo movie, they had to abandon the Zeo powers in favor of the Turbo powers so they could go in with stealth because it was too much power and they were gonna pop up on the radar. So they went with a different power set that had stealth installed in it. So to say that you have a morpher with five power sets in it, that would kill a person. No. No one person should be able to cycle through five sets of powers. Moreover, the Zeo powers. That's... Mm, you can't... It's, it's too much. So, the Master Morpher, I think, was a, a fine concept. I, I found a workaround. I found a workaround. And you end up... We, I deal with that in Season 5. If you get to Season 5 of Elite Force, I find a workaround... For, for the Master Morpher, and I introduced Tyranno King. So, there's that. Uh, let's see. Um, Battle for the Grid. Yes, Victor. Fantastic game. I don't play it online. I don't play online because I'm not good, and people cheat. They get you in that corner, and they just beat the crap out of you, so I try not to do that. Um, first episode of Power... Really? Dude, White Light was your first experience with Power Rangers? Honestly, dude, seeing Tommy with that... Oh, and descending down like a god. That was dope. So if that was your first experience, like, welcome. Like, that's that's a good spot to start in. Um, Go Rangers and music is my outlet. Same, music used to be my thing, but I found, I found that music puts you in a place and, and puts you in a mood. Like, music is more love language for me. Hey, I got some Google goggles. Google goggles. Google goggles. Um, 
and and comic book talks just became my second viewer. I was salty. Now, why were you when you were salty with, with, with white light? I think it was cool. It was an obvious red herring because they straight up say, "Why can't Tommy get the powers?" And they go, "I'm sorry, the Green Ranger can't." They didn't. They didn't say the White Ranger. They didn't say Tommy. They just said the Green Ranger can't. I thought that was dope. Um, the 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 misdirect there. Also, there's a video on TikTok on my TikTok here. You'd have to find it. Like this is why I want playlists so bad. I did a video where. We talk about how Time Force is present for the events of White Light. And they actually give Zordon what they did. They give him quantum morphing pods to make the morpher work. And then I show a clip from Power Rangers Time Force where they're working on quantum morphing pods with Eric's morpher. So there's a connection there. There is a connection. Um, oh, okay. If you were mad that Jason wasn't the leader anymore, I agree. I don't think that there was a need to remove Jason from power. Surely Tommy was the more popular ranger. He was more popular, but I don't think he was a lead. He was never really the best leader. Tommy never did the best job in leadership at all. Like I think that Rocky, if given a chance, would have done better. Like I feel like if he wasn't living under the shadow of Tommy is here and Jason was the Red Ranger before me. Rocky would have done fine. Uh, hey, I was trying to answer a question you had earlier, but it keeps getting buried. Um, hey, you're like my number two viewer, dude. What was your question? Don't let your stuff get buried, man. We we go. Oh, it's 930 now. We gonna wrap this up in the next five minutes or so, but I won't leave till we get to your question, dude. What was it? What was going on? Ah, uh, Tommy is a good ranger. Tommy was a good ranger. He's a good ranger, but he's no leader. He's no leader. Could you elaborate on... Okay. All right. Here we go, Mr. Parsons. Tommy's not a good leader. Here's why. Tommy gets the white ranger powers. He's immediately made the leader, and he still needs Jason to come bail him out. No problem. We, we switch to Zeo, where he's the leader again. Who does he call to come bail him out because he needs help? Jason. Jason does it, and Jason comes and bails him out. We get to Turbo. He can no longer, he's not doing the best job. He's not the effective leader. What does he do? Gives his morpher to a noob. Just out of nowhere, just black guy on a bus. Like, straight up. Like, really? Like, there were no interactions between Tommy and TJ prior to him getting the powers, which I thought was weird. Then you get to Dino Thunder, which I think is the biggest testament to why he is no leader. He didn't pick the Rangers at all. Elsa picked the Rangers. She said these three, oh, I got a hat. Elsa picked those three people and said these people will be Power Rangers. He didn't want to take them. He didn't want them to come. They broke into the cave. They bonded with him. And he was just like, well, I guess these are the Rangers I have to deal with. And then for the rest of the season was not present. In the third episode, gets captured. Yeah, yeah, he gets the Dino Gem, sure. But then he gets trapped in the Amber, so he's gone. Then he's in a coma, so he's gone. Then he's invisible, so he's gone. And I know these are contractual things because Jason David Frank couldn't be there every episode. He couldn't be there on set. But, like, Tommy was absent for 60% of Dino Thunder. And when he was there, he was getting captured or not giving very good advice. Like, all the advice they got came from Haley. Watching the, 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 the tape from the Ranger history came from Haley. Like, none of it was actually Tommy. Haley even says it herself. She says he's no rocket scientist. She's the one who built the Morpher. She's the one who adapted the technology. Tommy was along for the ride. Tommy was never the guy who was doing it. It was he was recognizable name value. I'm not saying that he wasn't a valuable ranger. He is. He's just not a leader. He's no leader. Uh, well, Elsa made them stay with Tommy. Yeah, she did. She straight up just kind of picked them, and it, it had nothing to do with them being rangers. Um, I thought TJ was dope. Oh, my God. We just did this whole thing where we didn't want to miss... Uh, 
uh, comic book bros, the comic book talk bros said, we, I didn't want to miss this question. I, I want to make sure. And now I'm just scrolling through and, hey, I, I tried asking a question you had earlier. Oh, I think you were trying to, like, just in the comments or something. Like, I think we're just missing it, bro. Um, I tell you what. How many how many followers do you have? Uh, if you've got the the what it takes to do a live video, send me an invite and you can pop in. You can ask me the question and we can discuss this for a few minutes before I head out because I was supposed to be gone four minutes ago, and but this has been this is amazing. You know what? Honestly, I tell you what. Yes, Tommy. That's a that's a fantastic call. Tommy was a soldier. He was not a leader. That was, and I think that's made very obvious when he was Draken. Because even as Draken, he's watching like the clips, and he's like, "You'll always be one of us, Tommy." He's in he all he's all in his feelings. He's he's a good ranger, but he's not the boss. Uh, I'm looking here, guys. We're at nine point six k likes. Holy crap! Holy crap! So I tell you what, we'll do. I'll stick around till we get to 10K. How about that? Whatever. No, I, I want to say that because, but then don't not send likes and because you want me to stay till 1130. <laughs> like it would be nice to hit 10K, but mm. all right, let me, um, oh, okay. He's good. He's only got 600 crap. That would have been cool. Uh, but I want to make sure. I'm sorry, Mr. Parsons. Like, just, just Tommy isn't. Like, I understand. I'm not shitting on Tommy. I enjoy Tommy. I've uh the the likes and like if you look in the upper left. Wow, I said that, and now we're up to nine point eight. Holy crap! Nine point nine, just like that. Dude, and Tyranno says he sees fourteen. I only see nine here. Nine point nine k here, and if that. I, I'm done. Now I see 10K. I'm blown away. Hey, there's a thing that I see where people are saying where if you tap the screen, you, you get like a whole bunch of little hearts. What does that do for the algorithm? Like if you were to do that on like a regular TikTok, what does that do? What's that for? Like, is it a super like? Does it move it up the algorithm? And it seems like if that does move it up the algorithm, wouldn't everybody just do that? And now we're just kind of stagnant. Like, I see 10.2. So, I also see eight people here. At one point, dude, there were 104 people here. What the hell? But um, I think that announcing announcing the live videos really helps. Because And then it's like, all I did was set up a chair and I came in. It doesn't work on regular TikToks? Because I've seen people doing that. It's just for a live? Okay. So... If they're just doing it for live streams and if you don't do that for people. So what does it do to the live stream? Like, will more people see it? Are you like, I thought you give gifts, give you. I think that, I think the, the gifts are another algorithmic thing. Like, I'm no professional. Like, the, the last live video that I did, I earned a whopping four cent. So I'm not worried about cashing out no time soon. But. If if this like if this is a money thing, that's cool. I'm not looking to make money. Um I did a a TikTok. I did a TikTok. It's in my stories, and I think stories don't get they don't get the same airtime as like regular TikToks do, which is fine. But Rebel Ranger and Lord Zed are trying to do a thing where they they want to get her a Rita suit. So I looked it up, and the Rita suit on ACG Cosplay is only $129. And I feel like if everybody were to just take a minute and say, I'm going to go over to Rebel Rangers page and send her a buck, she would have her suit by the end of the day. Like, I haven't done it yet, which is awful. And that's because I don't have Cash App. I'm not a Cash App guy. I, I've got Venmo. I've got PayPal. Like, but I do. I also want to send a buck so that she can get her suit. I want everybody to have a suit. I, I understand how empowering having your own gear is. And I feel like everybody in this community should have that. Imagine if just once a week 
we picked a person and we said, all right, everybody, we're going to take one buck. L or all, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's Rebel Ranger. If we everybody took one buck, it would cost you four bucks a month. But if we did that once a month, well, no, 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 once a week, once a week, it's four, once a week, so four bucks a month. If we were to do that, if we were to pick a ranger who didn't have a suit or didn't have a morpher or they were lacking in some area, there was something they needed to complete their ranger. Like, I'm not looking to, to help people get their collection together, but if there's a ranger who doesn't have a morpher or there's a ranger who needs help getting a helmet, I don't see why we can't just everybody put in a buck. Like once a, I would never start a Patreon, but I would start a pool that says everybody give a buck to Rebel Ranger. Don't even send it to me. I don't want it. I don't want to be dealing with the money at all. But if everybody were to go and give her a buck, she would have her suit by the end of the week. No problem. I'd what? I hear you, go Ranger, and I think the fear that I have is that if I get a cash app. And I put a cash app up here, people will send me money. <laughs> I know how silly that sounds, but I I don't know how to handle that kind of support. Like, there are a lot of people that I watch on YouTube. There are a lot of people that I watch on TikTok. And I show my support by commenting. I show my support by showing up. Like... If people started sending me money, I don't know how. I'm just happy to be acknowledged and included. I'm just happy that you guys are here and people care. You know, like, if you want to do something for me, read my shit. Like... That's where my heart is. If you want to look out for me, if you, I, I want to look out for the Phantom, read my shit. Like, that's, but I, I'm understanding now that squad means something. And you guys, like, you guys are coming out in droves to show me support. And I, oh my God, I love that so much. I keep, I keep stressing I'm a 47-year-old black man originally from Detroit, Michigan. Y'all got me on the internet, on live stream, trying not to cry. Like, it... Do we follow each other, comic book dude? Like, I, I don't think we do. Um, it's a beauty. I got so many phones. This is ridiculous. Look, this is where I was in the attempt to find the, the best phone that I can do, like Power Ranger stuff for you guys. I got all these phones and I was like, which one of these would be the best? I set it on my iPhone here. My iPhone does the best recording. But this phone here is the one that I do most of my stuff. See, I literally, I literally turn it on. It's stuff like this. Who is this? I, and this is Mystic Ranger 22. I watch these. But this isn't con this is somebody else's content. You don't even say anything. That, mm, mm, that that bothers me, but I came here specifically. I wanted to see if me and Comic Book Blue were following each other. I don't think we are. And if we're not, we should take care of that. Cause you my dude. I don't, I'm not seeing you on my list, bro. Like that's alright. You know, we'll we'll knock that out. We will knock that out. You should the SPD Squad logo. Is there a... You mean like the, the logo that I put, like the sticker? Don't do that, man. Holy crap. Like... I don't know how to handle... I don't know how to handle stuff, bro. Like, you guys are so cool. All right. Oh, I can't just tap his name. Oh, there... Oh, crap. You were... See? I don't know anything. Boom. Follow. Now I'm following because that's my man's in them. Squad, let's go. I I get so choked up when you guys just I just I just came here so people would read my shit. Like I understand I was content to just let Elite Force just be a thing for me. You know, I was told once it was and I saw it on TikTok again, it was like 
would you write if nobody was reading? And I was like, I would, because I enjoy the process. I enjoy writing. I enjoy bringing things to life. I enjoy that so much. And I was ready for that to just be a guilty pleasure. That was just a thing that I did. It was just quietly to myself that I would have a good time and I would enjoy Power Rangers. And it and it has been. And then my wife started reading it and she and Kershaw was like, you have to show people. You have to show people. And I was legitimately concerned about showing it to other people because a finger heart? Wow. Okay. I got finger hearts and diamonds. Like I, I didn't want to show it to other folks because real talk, what if somebody was like, this is stupid? You know, or, or real talk, what if they were like, that's not the canon. That's not what I wanted to like. It, understand that if you don't push the ranger that people like, if you if they're reading your thing and they go, well, where's Tommy? This is Tommy. What do you mean Tommy's with cat? This is a bad fan. It's like no, it's bad because you don't like it. It's bad because you didn't like you. Didn't, you don't like the canon. Like if you don't like the direction, that's fine. But power. Tommy and Cat got married. Tommy and Cat have grandkids. You know what? That's people keep saying get a cash app. You know, maybe, maybe I just I I don't I don't want to make it about that. You know, like, dude, Mike, see. I just want to talk about Power Rangers with my people, man. I... You know what? Fine. Fine. I won't I won't argue with you guys anymore. Like, okay. Sure. I just Well, Comic Book Bro, what's your name, man? So I don't I don't have to keep calling you Comic Book Bro. If you, after this, maybe not tonight, or maybe later on tonight, I don't know what your schedule looks like, but I'd be happy to sit down and discuss your series with you. Like, if you have ideas, I'm always looking to incorporate as many things as I can into Elite Force, because I think the ultimate goal, like, and I don't think I've ever said this to anybody, ever, wow, ultimately... Are, are you guys familiar with uh, uh, Amit? I, I can't pronounce his last name. Amit Bakula or something? like I can't pronounce it. He was one of the head writers for Wild Force. And he got his start doing... He did the Scorpion Rain fan film where he took like really bad, low-quality clips from Zeo and put them together in such a way to tell a story that was supposed to connect Zeo to Turbo. And that that fan film wasn't received very well, but it was his foot in the door to actually do other things. And they made him the head writer of Wild Force, and he made his shit canon. He decided Scorpion Rain was canon, and he could do that. So that's what he did. I would love. It's a pleasure to meet you, Elijah. My name is Patrick. Cool to have you here. I would love in a perfect world to have somebody take a look at my stuff and go, cool, seat at the table. Because once I have a seat at the table, once I have a say so, I can make a leap force cannon. I can, all it would take is a word from somebody with a seat at the table to say this is cannon. And then Power Rangers SPD Elite Force. All 22 seasons, all 13 spinoffs, Canonicum the movie, all of it would be canon. And that's the dream. That's the dream. So, oh, hey, um, Mike. I got so many Mikes. There's so many Mikes. My father's name was Mike. So that's cool. Oh, my gosh. It's, uh, there's just... Oh my God, there's so much love in this chat room. Hey, from now, all 13 of you guys, all of y'all, 
y'all everybody follow each other. I want a chain every I want this should be 13 mutual people. This should all we should squad goals. Let's go. Everybody Salvador the wise. I knew that though. Assume. Um you I would I'm going to I check everybody's content, sir. Like straight up. Like here you go. Boom. I boom. Follow Everybody in here should be following everybody else, like for real. Um, I'm I'm always down to check out other people's stuff because I'm all about the exchange of information. You know, I want. I think realistically, and then guys, I really should go. I really should go. I think what happens is, and I won't throw shade, even though it would be easy. There are some people here who use TikTok as a vehicle or medium to, and I don't want to say trick you into giving, giving them money, but convince or persuade. And I don't want to ask anybody for anything. I come here for the attention and the company. I come here for the talks and the exchange. I come here to promote my work and hopefully somebody enjoys it. To ask you for money, I don't, squad, you know, like, but, but I, and I, I hear you, thank you, I know, and this, this, this whole, this whole fucking room, all of y'all are just, okay, okay, I'm, I have support, I have supporters, I have squad, like, I hear you, man, but like, the phantom goes where he's needed. And I stay as long as I'm needed. I know that's a throwaway line that he says once or twice in the show, but I've come to live by that. Like, I don't want to say TikTok needed me, but there was nobody doing this. There was nobody having these conversations. And I think we filled a niche. I think we slid into a, we, 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 we found a comfortable medium that works for us. And, and I, I am. Jurassic Heart straight up do I am I'm living the dream. I wanted to do the phantom shit so that I could I could be in Shattered Past and I wanted to to get on screen with Jessica Ray and do some stuff and I've spoken to her and she's like my agent would be down. I've known you for a long time. We'll work something out. Jessica Ray is down to do shit with your boy. I can do it if I come up with the money because she's also sad that costs money. But I could do that. The money won't be a problem. Like, I wanted to do that for the recognition, but I'm getting that in spades from you guys. It's, I'm like a giddy schoolgirl. I, I just, I'm coming, hey guys, look at my toys. Hey guys, I got toys. You guys like my toys? And you guys are like, yeah, we like your toys. Give me money. Also, get with me. Signed by Jason Font. Fuck with me. Like, and nobody else that, is anybody rocking a transporter device? Does anybody like I'm I'm an action figure guy, like action figures are fine, but I'm a prop guy. And I, I wanted to do things so that I could be I could do films and stuff so that I could get the recognition like this I've got a custom coin. This is my Savage Jackal coin. So I could have a Wild Force Ranger. I got a Wild Force vest in the closet. Like I go hard. But I'm understanding now. I'm I'm slowly coming to the understanding. Oh, give me one second. Hmm. Right, Katie? Right? Jurassic Heart. Let me come and click your name, bro. Oh, yeah, we got 277. Like, I would love to have heard your story. You know what? Do a video. Do a, do a TikTok. Tip, do a story time about how you met Jason. Is that Jason or JDF? I'm assuming you met JDF. 
do that and tag me in it. And I want to check that out. I remind you of your godmother. That's that's dope. That's dope. Thank you. Thank you for that. Like, ugh, it's so weird to me, y'all. Uh, give me a minute. I need a water. And I didn't want to stand up. And y'all see I ain't got on no pants. <laughs> I just needed a water. I'm not trying to bring down the mood. I just wanted to make sure that you got the answer to the question you asked earlier. Oh, I did. I did ask a question earlier. You know what? Too much of this make you forget shit, dude. They, I did. The, I th wasn't, the question was how many people had gotten to at least the third episode of Elite Force. That was the question, right? I think that's where we were. And I think we may have halfway got an answer. I know some people said they hadn't checked it out yet. And some people said they had started. But I will swing back around. Because you're right. Thank you, bro. Thank you. If, if, if there's anybody here who has made it past, like, the third episode. Oh, yeah. Katie. Katie says she read the whole prequel. She says she read the whole prequel. Um... I'll ask you, Katie, while we're here and while other people can figure out if they they made it through the third episode or not, what did you think of the Zolara character? Because I was I was really on the fence about how that was gonna work. And I've I positioned Shingeti in Elite Force to be like like the biggest like dilemma that they ever had like they referred to it as the Shin Getty massacre it was just like it was terrible how many people died so I'm curious to know how how you felt about the Zolara character and Shin Getty as a whole if you just take a minute like you don't have to type out a whole paragraph or anything like please don't like I'm gonna click your name Katie Katie, Katie, sixty six hundred fifty nine. So damn, you can't pop in and just do a thing. That's all right. We gonna get there. We all gonna get there. That's why we all following each other. We all gonna get everybody up there. Realistically, y'all, anything past a thousand don't matter. You ask me what happened to the Red Ranger from from what? Man, I appreciate everything you do. You know what, dude? I'm I'm happy that I helped you out with something. I'm 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 glad. I'm glad that like if you told me that this ended today, if you said, Hey, we gotta wrap this up, you can't be on TikTok anymore, you're too old. I was born in nineteen seventy five, dude. Like you see that TikTok going around where people say stuff like, Oh, were you a slave? Like I've legit had people ask me if I was a slave because I was born in nineteen seventy five. Yeah, I noticed. I noticed. I saw that we got way more than, than uh, wait, 100 likes or just like, no, because I'm looking at like 12.2 now. Range here is 1696. You know, I think that's going to be a standard rule for me from now on. Like, if I do, if I do live videos more often, I'll only let squad up like because there are people and I'm I keep saying I don't want to say names but I did a live video recently and somebody whom I wasn't the biggest fan of just popped up and because I'm so new I was like oh what's this and I pushed the button and before I realized it dude was in my live stream and suddenly it just knocked all the wind out of my sail because it was like uh now nah. I there's there are some there's some content I just I just don't like like there are some people I just don't hey y'all know that red nerd ranger chased that one guy off of off of tiktok the guy who did the video talking about how people who don't like pop or people who watch power rangers were silly and he they like forced that dude to delete his TikTok and forced him off. Like, I'm not down with that. You think, how can you be a Power Ranger and bully somebody for their opinion about the Power Rangers? Like, it's that dude's prerogative. 
not to like Power Rangers or to think that what we like is silly. And what you're talking at the end of the day is we're watching people in their mid-20s put on spandex, pretend to be teenagers, and fight people in rubber suits. Like, it is silly in, in practice. So I don't feel like we get to tell that man he wrong for his opinions, and I don't think we should have chased him off uh, a TikTok for, for saying what he wanted to do. You know? Oh, you don't... Rebel Ranger is my girl. I like her. He didn't mean to, Tyranno. It was... It's the video that made him... Okay, you know what? Cards on the table. Fuck it. We're in overtime, right? This is what you guys came for, right? This is what you want. So here, Red Nerd Ranger and I, about seven weeks ago, I had like 600 likes. I have 600 people following me, and he had closer to 800. Like he was, and he said, oh, I got a little crown. That was the king. Um, we said, let's race to a thousand. And then we raced to a thousand and I edged him out. I edged him out like, like maybe by like 200, like not even much, but I was just, just got there. And then we, we congratulated each other and that's cool. And we're like, Hey, now it's a race to two. And then I, I got, I wanted to hit one, three, nine, seven, which is where I wanted to go. And then I got 14 and then I got 15. And then it was 17, and I was running a contest. And Red Nerd Ranger was kind of lacking back at 13. And I was like, I don't understand. Why? Because we were neck and neck, and you were ahead of me at some point. Why aren't you consistently where I am? Like, you should be far ahead of me. Then he did that video bullying that dude about the Power Rangers. And I don't know the technical definition of viral, but it was big enough that dude got like 2,000 followers overnight. Overnight. Came from out of nowhere. I'm personally happy for Red Nerd Ranger. I think he's a cool dude. I think his content is cool. I think he has very good ideas. I think that there are... I don't agree with everything that everybody's doing. And I... My feeling on that is still very much I could if I did a video right now they got 2,000 new followers it wouldn't be squad you know what I mean like for everybody who who popped in at 745 when this thing was supposed to start at 8 like you guys have been here it's been two hours now like the casual person who's just like, I followed you because you did one funny thing. They're going to pop in, look around, and they're gone. Like, I would rather have 11 people who squad than have 2,000 new followers who are going to unfriend me in a minute anyway. You know? But I think we should, we should all be support. Okay. Here, there's an excuse to actually my iPhone's gonna die on me for a minute in a minute, so we're gonna have to wrap this up. I'm glad that I was able to help you out, Mike. Like seriously. I, I was telling Titanium today. Um, I've already started writing the arc where you get the yellow morpher. Like, there's an entire episode. And I'm happy to send it to you, specifically to you, because it involves you. When it's done, it's in draft form. When it's done, I'm happy to send it to you, despite the fact that you do not appear in the episode, you are talked about. Titanium is talked about heavily, as the Rangers of the current era are discussing who should be the next Yellow Ranger. It's, it's a fun read. It's, it's... For me, I tried to write it in such a way where if you had never read anything I had ever done, you would at the very least get a sense of who these characters were, and now they're introducing other people. So if you would like to share, I'm happy to send it to you. Tyranno, bro, if you want to check out my stuff, it's I would love it. Know in my heart and my soul, I would love it if you did. Know that I want everybody in here to have read it. Know that every time I see each and every one of you, 
in the back of my mind, I'm going to be wondering if you did. But I, I'll i never be that person who hounds you and has to. Did you read it? Did you check it out? What did you think? I hate when people do that. I hate, mm. Dude, you don't have to send me your videos. I'm going to see it. You don't have to send it to me in your DMs. I promise you I'm going to see it. If you want to tag me a thing, that's dope. I'm always down to get tagged because all that says to me is that you saw a thing, you wanted your boy, the Phantom, to see it, and that's cool. Please, tag me in anything you think is interesting. But please don't don't flood my inbox with TikToks. You don't have to do that. Not that any of not that anybody here does that, but just just putting it out there just to be I this this is where it's at for me. This here, like this little influx here. Like you see the sort of people who pop in to other live streams. Like before this, I popped into a couple of other live streams to see what they were doing. And everybody was just sitting around talking. And, and that's fine. There was some Dino Thunder discussion and everybody was having a good time. That's fine. But they were ignoring the chat. There were five people in the room. One of them was a dude I'm not really that fond of. So that already knocked the wind out of my sails. So I, I like... The calm, cozy atmosphere that we give each other here. Like, it's just members of our squad getting together and just kicking it. I like answering questions. You guys like hearing me talk. <laughs> I like interacting with you guys. And we are going to get... This is what, realistically, I think this is what Eternal Ranger was looking for. When he said, let's do a council. He wanted to have a group of people who were mm, his end people. And I was new. The very first, fun fact, if you didn't know, the very first TikTok I ever did was a duet with Eternal Ranger. Because I saw him as a guy who had a whole bunch of likes. And that's something that I wanted to do. So I did one. And it got like 700 views. And at the time, I thought that that was amazing amazing i was like i got all these likes people like me and then i tried to do other stuff and it didn't work out but i think this is what he was trying to do when he said let's have a council he wanted a group of tight-knit people mm, that he could just sit down and he could just kick it with but what we got was a power struggle and a dynamic where there were people like there were clearly we're up here we're the council of henshin and then the regular council of rangers is down here and but but you can apply to come up here you just said, fuck that fuck that squad period that's it i i i don't have any problem with eternal ranger eternal ranger is cool Eternal Ranger is my boy. He's giving me shout outs and I've gotten a boost, but that boost don't last long. Again, somebody popular says, check out this person because they're popular. That boost goes over there, but it's really up to you to have something to say to make them want to stay. So the people who come over there, the people who tend to like the content that people like Eternal Ranger do, don't necessarily like the content that I do. Because I'm not flamboyant and loud and I'm not out there and wacky and I don't do skits and I don't dress up in my suits all the time. Like, that's just... Dude, Katie, I, I will say that you sharing private, intimate things with the group is super cool. And you know what? Okay. All right. I'll, um, for you. For you, I'll, 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 I'll tell you a thing. Now, we're going to overlook. If you go perusing through my TikToks, you'll find the whole story where in 2007 I was homeless. And me and my kid were sleeping under the bleachers in a high school gym. Awful. It was not a fun time for us. But that's not where we're going. I'm not going to go there with you. This was... I got a call from my stepfather who said my mother was in the hospital. So we dropped what we were doing and we ran up there to see what was going on. And by the time we got there, she said she was fine. She's like, I'm fine. Don't even worry about it. Go home. But my mother never left that hospital. See, she, my mother had, had lung cancer and didn't tell anybody. Or at least she didn't tell her kids. And she knew when she checked in, she wasn't coming out, you know. 
but the rest of us who didn't have all the information hoped against hope. And it became clear that it wasn't going to happen. And I've told my wife this and think maybe my son, but I don't think I've ever told another living person this. And I'm, I'm going to share it with you now. Squad. Like, uh, that means something. My sister and I had a conversation. It was the middle of the night. We were sitting up and we were playing cards and we were trying to pretend like our mother wasn't dying in a hospital bed. And we both agreed that it wasn't the sort of life that she would want. My mother was very clear to not, do not resuscitate. Don't, don't leave me hooked to machines. It wasn't what she wanted. And we looked up and it had been like two months and that's all it had been. And my sister and I, as like her husband didn't get to say so for whatever reason, it fell to her kids for some reason. I don't. We, as her, as her children, decided that we would pull the plug. Like it wasn't what my mother would want, you know. And no sooner than we made the call, we made that decision amongst ourselves. We said in the morning, we'll, we'll give them a call and we'll, we'll make that decision. But before we could, my stepfather called me to tell us that she had already passed on. And I remember feeling like we had given up on her. You know, like the decision we made while we wrestled and struggled over it, didn't mean a damn, but it felt like we had given up on her. And that hurt me for a really long time. Like, and, and understand, I've been a writer all my life. My mother has never read a word of anything I've ever written. Never, never. Like, she was such a hard ass and she didn't give a shit about Power Rangers. I was, clearly, I was never going to show her anything Power Rangers related. And then my other content was like coming of age, teenage drama stuff. So like, she was, she was never going to read it. And that's fine. My father, who he, they had been divorced for years and moved on. My father was married to somebody else. So it wasn't like, like, sure, that was his ex-wife. It bothered him, but, you know, like, what what can you do? He'd moved on with his life. So you fast forward to 2007, early 2007. I'm, and understand, like, I'm in a homeless shelter at the time. Like, I had moved out. It was a whole problem. Like, it's a mess. It's a, my, my life is a mess. I've, I'm, I was living in a house that had black mold in the wall. I had a tumor in my head, like I was sick and it wasn't a good look for me. And I'm also, now I'm in a homeless fucking sh It's a mess. My father, one day, he woke up, he kissed his wife, he said good morning to my niece, his first granddaughter, said he was gonna make breakfast grabbed a Pepsi, blew up a balloon, had a heart attack and died. Just like that. No rhyme, no reason, no warning, just did. And my father had never read a word of my writing and the last conversation I had had with my father was a negative one. We weren't on good terms. We weren't on the best page. He didn't agree with some of my decisions. I certainly didn't agree with some of his. But I can look back now like I haven't I haven't had that that safety net that most people have, you know that Oh, if something goes wrong, I can just go back to my mom's place. I haven't had that safety net in a very long time. And in 2008, 
I was homeless and broke. Both my parents were gone and have any money. But I met my wife. <laughs> I met my wife. I met my wife on a ringtone website called Fun for Mobile. It was a free ringtone app. <laughs> And she's like, oh, you're from Michigan? I'm from Michigan. And come to find out she had moved to California like a year before that. And I was, I had nothing. I didn't have nothing going on. I was, so I left. I packed up and I came to California. <laughs> and I've been, I've been here since early 09. And my wife and I with the, we've had some off and ons and some ups and downs, and it wasn't always the easiest, and it wasn't always the best, but at the end, she was always there. Like, when I tell you that my son was the first person I said squad with, that was the first person, my wife was the first person my son allowed me to say squad with for him, because his birth mother wasn't the best, you know? So, but I'm going to digress because, wow, we are, you guys, squad. Um, Byron, hey, Byron, my thoughts on Power Rangers Dino Fury. <laughs> Power Rangers Dino Fury. Um, I, I've been enjoying Dino Fury, like, no. Nah. It's okay, Tyranno. You, because if I don't, we'll we'll go down and we'll it'll be a whole thing. Dino Fury to me feels like fan fiction, and like in a good way, like the Morphin Masters are back in full swing, Zed's back in full swing. It's it's a testament to the history and the writing and I think Dino Fury is probably the biggest indication that we're looking to do Shattered Grid. Let me point a couple of things out to you. One, I don't remember the guy's name, but the guy that worked for Void Knight who said that he could bring back anybody past, present, or future from any reality. That guy, the guy who brings Zed back and puts the collar on him. That Why mention other realities. Why mention that past, present, or future, anybody can come back if that wasn't something you were looking to do later? Why reincorporate Lord Zed, who was dead and gone? Why reincorporate that if it wasn't going to come up later? They make a whole point. The Morphin Masters wake up the Gold Ranger specifically to handle Lord Zed. And wouldn't you know it, he, he didn't even play a major part. Well, he wasn't dead. You're right. You're right. He wasn't dead. He was changed into a human and left to his own devices. Rita would go on to become the mystic mother, but we don't know what happened to Zed. But I don't see why Zed would have gone back to evil, especially if he was with Rita. But, you know, I have nothing to substantiate that. He became the, what, the master? Like, like from, from Mystic Force, the master? Yet yeah, Zed, he was a race, but he was still a human. Like, his human form was still there. I would imagine that because Reader, Reader? Rita became the mystic mother, she would have held on to some of her memories as Rita, as the, myst as the mystic mother. So Zed would have to remember that he was Zed, despite the fact that he was human. I'd love to hear how you came to the realization like walk me through your process on how Lord Zed became the master because that would be but I guess you know it's not really that far fetched if you think about it because that's where we got the mystic mother and the mystic mother didn't really interfere with any other team she would only she only got involved here maybe because her husband was involved hmm damn that's an intriguing thought. And that's a hard stop, Katie, because that's not true. Rita was getting headaches as early as the first episode in the first season. Long before Zed was introduced, she was getting headaches. 
So I, I don't think that that necessarily had much to do with it. But I've always had the theory that she had headaches because Master Vile put a chip in her head. Because if you read the comics, early in her life, and he put a chip in her head to control her. This is, I forgot we were supposed to be wrapping this up, guys, because my phone is about to die. But I... I thank you all for showing up and staying as long as you did. Man, we've been at this for a little over two hours. Two hours and 20 minutes. That's It almost ran twice as long as we intended. But that's cool. You know why? Because we, we, we formed a family today. Like We got a squad off the deal. So I appreciate all of you for showing up. And I'm going to get a cash app. I'll get a cash out. I'll, I'll, I'll do it because I ask for support. I don't get to dictate to you what that support looks like. You know? And I know Multiverse Range is going to get on me and he's just going to say, yeah, you make the decision for yourself. And you're right. But I came looking for companionship and conversation and support for what I was working on. And I do turn I saw it do I knew what you meant. It was fine. <laughs> do you gotta watch autocorrect? Because we we hit the button too quick. I've gotten in trouble with my wife over autocorrect. She'd be like, what did you say? No, baby, I'm sorry. Autocorrect. This is this has been nice. And I don't get to say, hey, please support me. And then when you guys say, oh, we want to give you money. And I go, no, no, not that kind of support. This support. I don't get to tell you how you get to support me. I don't get to tell you how you engage. That would like me saying, all right, everybody today, you've got to read Elite Force or I'm blocking you. What? That's stupid. Like, I'm not going to. I'm not going to force you to support me the way I want the support. And if you if this is what you guys want to do like I think God turns into Godzilla real talk I'm not a religious person but God turns into Godzilla when you don't do a capital G because it assumes you mean Godzilla for whatever reason they capitalize God as an uppercase G again not religion not gonna but I think that's why it switches to that so yeah I'll, I'll get a cash app because it's not for me to dictate how you guys choose to like my content. I don't get to tell you how to interact, you know? So I will, because you asked. And I thank you, like, sincerely. Um, for everybody who took a minute to share in our share circle, I appreciate you. Like, in the live chat, I don't want to call her out. I don't want to call her out. But as we were talking in the chat, Katie sent me a message and at, at, oh at 1006 wow i missed that a long time ago but thank you for for everybody with the open heart power that we had that was super cool i never i never said that publicly about my parents at all i had never so thanks for listening and thanks for letting me share i'll do I'll do more of these. I tell you what, we'll get everybody to a thousand and then we'll all get together and we'll just sit around and we'll fucking kick it and it'll be a whole thing. It'll be a whole thing. We'll we'll squad chat. And people will be like, hey, can I join your squad chat? Nah, we good. You squad? You squad, bro? You down the lead for us? You check that out yet? What season you on? Oh, yeah, Omega, you Omega can pop in whenever you want. Don't, Tyranno, stop, dude, that... Fret not, dude. Lex, less vex. Not a thing. Not a thing at all. Super cool, dude. But, yeah, that's it. Because my phone's... My phone's going to die. Thank you. A hundred thousand times over. A hundred thousand times over for their support. I appreciate you. This was the most productive live video I've ever done. Thank you all, seriously, squad. Mm. Mm. Oh my God, it's so nice to actually 
Mm. So thank you all. May the power protect you all. And if you need me, you know how to find me.